Welcome, cultists and cultites. Today's video is a surprise that's all about the new patch that just came out for Neo 2, which is more like a mini DLC than a patch itself, but let's just get straight into it. First of all, they gave out a free armor set as kind of a celebration to 1 million people downloading Neo 2. The armor is called the Milan set. If you go into Boons under the shrine, you should be able to get one piece of each of the armor. And more importantly, the smithing decks, because each piece of the armor is only going to be level 1 with a very small toughness plus bonus on it. What's unique about this set is it doesn't actually have any special effects like most armor sets, which makes it great for New Game Plus because you could get all you want on it because you usually can only get special effects equal to the number of slots that show up. You always have one taken up by that predefined special effect, so if you use yellow inheritables to place things onto it, you'll be able to get more. But for early game, it's not that great because it doesn't really have that much more toughness or armor than other armors, although it is kind of light for a heavy armor. They also added a bunch of new missions in this patch. They added two solo boss fights in the shadow region, which you unlock by beating the main mission, and one of them you unlock by beating the Golden Nation submission. Both are pretty interesting and challenging, but nothing uniquely special. And another bonus submission in that same region, which you unlock by beating the main mission, that is an actual extra story mission that includes getting a new spirit called Muzuki, which is apparently a spirit from the first game, a water defensive Amrita Brute spirit. There's a bonus mission in the Twilight region that is a Gauntlet mission that you can unlock by beating the Twilight version of the main mission in the area, and it's pretty interesting and fun. But what's really cool is there's four new missions added to the very last region of the game that are unlocked after you beat the main mission of the game. There are two solo boss fights. One of them is a 2v2 solo boss fight, so yes, you're fighting it alone as in you can't play with other players, but it gives you an NPC to fight with, and you fight against two other NPCs in the fight. The other one is kind of a boss rush solo boss where you're fighting a bunch of people. What's great about both of these is you end up fighting people from dojo missions in both these submissions, which means you can grind for dojo skills and dojo weapons like the wooden weapons without having to use the crappy dojo wooden weapons. You can actually use your own builds and stuff. It's also pretty fun to test out your skill to see how great you are at fighting bosses. They also add some actual boss rush missions in here, which are again unlocked by beating the main mission of the region. The first First one is the easier boss rush where you fight some of the later game bosses and the second one you fight the very end game bosses all in a row. Really challenging honestly. The second one I couldn't even beat using the armor even though I'm very out leveled because it wasn't my build but I did beat it when I switched back. So looking forward to see testing your ability in New Game Plus on these missions or even before New Game Plus once you beat the base game try out these missions. A lot of fun. They made it so you can now hide the blood on your body which is really cool. But you can't hide the blood on weapons so there's always going to be blood on you somewhere. You can also hide your primary weapon, your secondary weapon, and your primary ranged or your secondary range. So either nothing shows up on your body or only what you have equipped shows up for your body if you want to be able to visually see it on yourself or if you just like being a lot more cleaner. Yes. Now when you go back to a shrine and it auto purifies the souls you just got, you can in that menu send the soul straight to resting right if you don't want to keep it or lock the soul if you want to make sure you don't get rid of it. Super useful addition. And the biggest, biggest change to this patch is photo mode. I'm not going to get into the exact specifics, but if if you watch what's happening right now, I hear I go through creating this amazing picture of red and blue because you can create lights on different sides. You can add filter effects. You can remove things like uh, graves and stuff. It's just an amazing mode where you can create pictures in game. And if you're playing single player, when you enter this mode, it pauses the game so that you can, you know, take pictures. In multiplayer, you can still do it, but it doesn't pause the game. You can add this to a shortcut of either R1 and start or R1 and the touchpad so that you can do it in the middle of combat like I've done in this picture. They've made a couple of changes to armor sets in the way their bonuses affect. First of all, the head of Inga Ninja set used to do 5% melee damage and 40 increased attack and defense on spear, but now it does 6.5% melee damage and 80 increased attack and defense on spear. So a little bit of buff there. The master of the spear set used to do 4% melee damage and 30 increased attack and defense on spear, and now does 5% melee damage and 40 increased attack and defense on spear. A multitude of hope set used to do 4% melee damage and it now does 5% melee damage. Righteous Strategist used to do 4% melee damage and 4% melee damage at the end as well. And now it does 6% at first and then 9% at the end. Ruler of the Riverside Yokai used to do 5% melee damage and 40 increased attack defense on Kasiragami. Now it does 7% melee and 80 increased attack and defense. Tacticians and Judy used to do 4% increased melee damage and 15% melee key damage increase. And now it does 6% melee damage increase and 20% melee key damage increase. And finally, the Triumph of Tranquility used to do 40 increased attack and defense on sword and 5% key pulse recovery and also 7% active skill 
damage increase, and now it does 50 increased attack and defense on sword, 10% key pulse recovery, and 10% active skill key damage. So overall, they have been buffed, mostly in melee damage increase and some key damages increases. You can flinch more easily in the Dream of the Strong or the harder difficulties, New Game Plus, from big moves. I think that's just to increase the difficulty for fighting higher level monsters and stuff in New Game Plus with heavier armor because you could usually tank through things and now you can you know get flinched easier it won't really affect you if you're light because you were probably already getting flinched anyways they also reduce the amrita you would lose when you're hit by an enemy if you had a lot of amrita and reduce it on certain bosses i don't actually know of any enemies other than maybe the tongue from the little imp guy but other than that there are a couple enemies that i think reduce amrita i'm not it's not usually a big deal to me but now it'll be less so that's good it says now this patch note i couldn't actually test because i don't have the game before the patch and i also don't have these skills but it said they adjusted the key damage for both hidden Katsuragami skills. You get both those skills from this same guy that I'm fighting at the moment, Aquaman, but I don't actually know what the key damage is, if it's more or less. Probably it's more, but they just said adjust it. In the tutorial, they added a section in the blocking part that talks about how you can block while flinched, which I think is great because a lot of people overlook blockings thinking you can just dodge instead. You can't block or you can't dodge if you flinch, but you can block if you flinch. So it's good to know that as a last resort, you can always block as long as you have key. They made it so benevolent graves can't be placed in like hot springs and other stuff you'd have to interact with, which is great because it'd be kind of annoying trying to, you know, go into a hot spring and you can't because someone put a dang sword in there. They also increased the drop rate of items if you kill them with the dweller soul core. The dweller is the little miner. And if you somehow, he doesn't really do that much damage, but if you get that last hit on it, it'll increase drop rate, which is great for grinding if you're trying to get items because you could utilize that to get a better item drop rate. So apparently I was not aware of this, but T soar into a different inventory than all your other items. So now in your own inventory, if you go to the T's, it shows your capacity of T um, objects and not the actual inventory instead. So out of 300 instead of the regular inventory. It also allows you to sort the T by simplicity, slender, and eccentricity now, which are all the ways that T can be. And the last and final change to the game, weapons now show the attack that they gain, including attack from other items. So if you have anything that just does straight up attack bonus, it will show up in your weapons number stat, but it doesn't include damage bonus things from like sets and other things. So just be aware of that. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any issues with the bosses and the boss press or just want to see more videos of my content, there's a video right here on how to beat Yatsei no Kame. If you want to see a video recommended by YouTube, it's right here. If you guys like this video and you want to see more content, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you guys want to hang out or have any questions, I stream on Twitch every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I hope you have a death-filled day.